good morning everyone and welcome to alvis's webinar thank you very much for coming to the webinar and i am sahri shiftahar and uh, today i am going to talk about single spore encapsulation for phytopathogenic fungi so starting with a brief introduction about the fungi uh, fungi as we know them are mushrooms yeast and mold which are basically the fruiting body of the fungi as you can see in the figure these are the mushrooms which are the fruiting body of the fungi they are made up of uh, filaments or multicellular body and these filaments are known as hyphae which are made up of uh, chitin in their cell wall and this is one of the main distinctive feature which differentiate the fungi from uh, the other uh, kingdom of plant and animals in the ecological system they have a very major role because they decompose the dead material and they secrete Uh, different digestive enzymes and uh, after digestion they uh, absorb the dissolved uh, materials uh, aside from that they also produce uh, various antibiotics and enzymes which are of industrial importance an example is for example uh, the yeast and according to an estimate there are 2.2 to 3.8 million species of fungi of which 1 lakh 20000 species are known and out of these known species 8000 are detrimental to the plant as you can see in figure d and e it's the infection of uh, the fungi on uh, grape leaves while in e the the maize kernel is totally infected by the fungi and as a result they affect the yield of the plants so they play an important role not only for uh, the beneficial ones but also like detrimental effects on the plants and around 800 species can uh, cause diseases in humans now coming to the topic of uh, single spore single spore is the unit of sexual or asexual reproduction of the fungi and uh, they are uh, adopted for the dispersal and survival of the fungi so they play a very important role in the life cycle of the fungi for their dispersal and survival now our object objective is to encapsulate the single spore of the fungi using the droplet microfluidics so we are going to get benefits from uh, some of the uh, advantages of droplet mi microfluidics which include that they can protect the encapsulated spore from the coarse external environment as well as they will provide the physical and chemical isolation of the spores and there will be less chances of contamination from the other organisms like other bacteria or fungi when the single spore is encapsulated in the droplets and also there will be fast and very efficient mixing of reagents within the uh, encapsulated spore if we want to perform some assays where mixing is required now the question arises why do we need the single spore to encapsulate it so there are three main aspects the first one is that we can know more about the fungi by encapsulating the single spore and studying it at the single spore level also we can perform the uh, high level spatial and temporal distribution and uh, the the local environment can be controlled very precisely when the spore is encapsulated and then we can study the response of the spore to different stimuli for example uh, different temperature or nutrient availability the second aspect is that uh, uh, it can provide better control tools for sensitivity assays as we can perform very high throughput and high uh, uh, high throughput and high uh, high speed uh, screening as well as we can have uh, a large amount of very dynamic and accurate information by studying the uh, thousands of spores at the same time and as we are dealing with uh, at the micron level so the consumption of reagent and chemicals will uh, automatically decrease and uh, the same uh, assay can be replicated on the chip by fabricating the multiple channels the third point is that uh, it can provide uh, the uh, help in the discovery of uh, new antifungal agents and fungicides as uh, in in the encapsulated uh, spore the response time will be faster because the uh, the few and distance will be shorter as well as uh, the the fungicide screening is uh, kind of stuck between um, Uh, is kind of stuck bit because uh, it takes around 10 to 11 years for a new fungicide to come to the market so it can provide a cheap and high throughput screening uh, to to fasten the discovery of new antifungal agents and also as we are uh, studying the single spore it can provide some new drug targets like some enzymes which we can target to design new fungicides so our objective is very straightforward which is to develop the microfluidics lab on chip device for single spore encapsulation in a very simple economic and rapid manner 
So to encapsulate this pore, we need uh, some components which include the flow control system, uh, some reservoirs, tubing, fittings, the microfluidic chip with the specific dimensions and geometries depending on the fungi. We want to encapsulate flow sensors to measure the flow rate and uh, then we need the fungal colony to uh, produce the spore suspension. So these are the simple steps which we have to follow. First, we need to have the fungal colony, which should be around seven to eight days old so that it can sporulate and produce the spores. And then we will use this colony to produce the spore suspension. And using the Poisson distribution law, we have to uh, optimize the level of uh, spores per ml because we need one spore per ml. So we're, we're using the Poisson distribution, we have to create the spore suspension, which is optimized. And then uh, we can, using the, the chip, we can encapsulate uh, the single spore. And after encapsulation, we will collect them in the glass capillary of tube, uh, of chip, and then we can um, incubate it depending on the fungi. Uh, here I am using the alternaria fungi, and for this we will incubate it at 27 degrees for six to eight hours. And after incubation, uh, we can perform the image analysis or microscopy to differentiate between the germinated and ungerminated spores. So here you can see it's uh, the alternate area spore, which is germinated after four hours of incubation and 27 degrees. And here it's the, the filament or hyphae of the, uh, the alternate area spore, while in uh, the lower uh, uh, figure, you can see that uh, it's just the spore and it's not germinated. So this is the, the setup for encapsulation of these pores where we have uh, the flow control OB1, which is connected to the LV flow software to control the uh, flow of the uh, liquids within the channels, which is connected to two reservoirs. The yellow one is the oil and in the other one, we have spore suspension connected to the flow sensors to measure the flow. And uh, these are connected to the chips and after encapsulation, we can connect, uh, we can collect the encapsulated spores in the vial. So this is the diagram of the PDMS chip, which I uh, used for encapsulation for, from the first inlet. We can inject the oil and from the second one, we will uh, inject the spore suspension. And uh, I forgot to mention before that uh, the spore suspension we prepare in half strength uh, PDV. And by using the flow focusing technique, we will encapsulate the single spores. So this technique can be applied to various fungi depending on the size. We can apply it from, uh, for the shorter, uh, uh, the fungi with the uh, shorter spore size, for example, the alternaria species and fusarium, uh, whose spore range from 10 to 20 microns to the other fungi with uh, a bit larger size of uh, spores, for example, uh, fusarium and macrophomina phytophthora, et cetera. So this uh, diagram shows that by changing the pressure of the oil and uh, water or spore suspension, we can control the size of the droplet which, uh, which are generated. So using this kind of um, uh, the graph, or you can say like by changing the pressure and uh, pressure of oil and water, we can uh, apply this technique to encapsulate not only one particular fungi, but uh, uh, the spores from very different fungi ranging from uh, 10 microns to 50 microns, depending on the size of the spore. So here are some of the applications of uh, encapsulating the single spore, which include uh, in genomics, we can use this technique for DNA sequencing and quantification of DNA and RNA, and also for the directed evolution, as well as in uh, proteonomics, it can be used for structural study of the proteins and their quantification, and also in protein engineering and enzyme analysis. I will. Um, uh, discuss the detail of uh, a few examples in the uh, upcoming slides. In salomics, it can be used for single spore analysis, as I have discussed uh, before that we can use it for, uh, for anal analyzing the uh, germination of uh, ungerminated or uh, germinated spores. And also we can do the sorting. Uh, the major application in the field, uh, uh, in the field of uh, plant pathology, where we can use this technique for diagnosis of uh, uh, sensitive and resistant uh, fungal uh, isolates. So we can use this technique to differentiate between the uh, sensitive and resistant fun uh, fun fungal isolates also for antifungal screening. 
and also we can uh, do some analysis to to have like new new candidates for the fungicide development here are some of the examples of uh, application of uh, single spore encapsulation so first application is high throughput enzymatic screening in which uh, uh, the author has uh, encapsulated the yeast mutated yeast cells to analyze different enzymes for example xylinase and uh, protease so first they mutated the yeast cells and then they encapsulated them using uh, uh, the droplet microfluidics and uh, after incubation they perform the screening assays and on the basis of fluorescence they have differentiated the fungi on the basis of their enzyme activity while in the second example uh, it can be used for high throughput antifungal drug discovery to screen different peptides or different antimicrobial agents uh, as well as, as well as fungicides so you can use the, the concentration gradient concentration gradient and then you can collect the uh, affected uh, micro sorry microorganisms in the chamber and then you can uh, characterize them on the basis of their response to the uh, antimicrobial agent you have applied and then you can sort them on uh, on sensitive like medium resistance or resistant the third application is uh, the phenotyping of vegetative and reproductive phases uh, this is also very important aspect so here what they have done is they have used uh, the uh, the fungi fusarium which causes the sudden death syndrome in soya bean and they have done the quantitative time lapse microscopy on uh, fusarium and then they studied its vegetative and reproductive phases and uh, they concluded that it takes around 5 hours for uh, fusarium to germinate and these kind of information can be very helpful to um, to find new drug targets for uh, development of fungicides so in the conclusion uh, the droplet based microfluidic plat platform allows us to compartmentalize the single spore in nanoliter droplets uh, we can study the germination and mycelial growth of uh, the fungi as well as the reproductive phases this uh, uh, lab on chip approach is simple economic and rapid and it can have varied uh, application in the field of uh, not only in the phytopathology but uh, in antifungal drug discovery in agriculture enzyme analysis and uh, food industry uh, these are some of the references uh, i have quoted in the presentation and uh, yes it's uh, that's it and uh, thank you very much for your time and attention and if you have any questions please feel free to ask